maybe let's zoom out and look at the standard model of, phys of particle physics. How does dark matter fit into it? First of all, what is it? Can you explain what the standard model is? So the standard model of particle physics is basically tells us about nature's most basic elements and their interactions. And so it's the substructure as far as we understand it. So if you look at atoms, we know they have nuclei and electrons. Nuclei have protons and neutrons in them. Protons and neutrons have particles called quarks that are held together by something called the strong force. They interact through the strong force, the strong nuclear force, with something called the weak nuclear force and electromagnetism. So basically all those particles and their interactions describe many, many things we understand. That's the standard model. We now know about the Higgs boson, which is associated with how elementary particles get their mass. So that piece of the puzzle has also been completed. We also know that there are kind of a weird array of masses of elementary particles. Mm -hmm. There's not just the up and down quark, but there are heavier versions of the up and down quark, charm and strange, top and bottom. There's not just the electron, there's a muon and a tau. There are particles called neutrinos, which are under intense study now, which are partnered with the leptons through the weak interactions. So we really do know these basic elements. And we know the forces, we know... I mean, when we're doing particle physics experiments, we can usually even ignore gravity, except in exceptional cases that we can talk about. So those are the basic elements in their interactions. Dark matter stands outside that. It's not interacting through those forces. So when we look at the world around us, we don't usually see the effects of dark matter. It's because there's so much of it that we do, and it doesn't have those forces that we know about. But the standard model has worked spectacularly well. It's been tested to a high degree of precision. People are still testing it. And one of the things we do as physicists is we actually want it to break down at some level. We're looking for the precision measurement or the energy or whatever it will take where those where the standard model is no longer working. Like, Not that it's not working approximately, but we're looking for the deviations. And those deviations are critical because they can tell us what underlies the standard model, which is what we really want to see next. Where can you find the, the places where the standard model breaks down? Like, uh, what, are the, what are the places you can see those tiny little deviations? So we don't know yet, mm -hmm. but we know the kinds of things you wouldn't want to look for. So one obvious place to look is at higher energy. Um, we're looking at the Large Hadron Collider, but we'd love to go beyond that. Higher energies means shorter distances, and it means things that we just couldn't produce before. I mean, E equals MC squared, so if you have a heavy particle and you don't have enough energy to make it, you'll never see it. So that's one place. The other place is precision measurements. If you, you know, the standard model has been tested exquisitely. So if it's, if it's been tested at 1%, you want to look at a tenth of a percent. Mm -hmm. And there are some processes that we know shouldn't even happen at all in the standard model or happen at a very suppressed level. And those are other things that we look for. So all of those things could indicate there's something beyond what we know about, which of course would be very exciting. When you just step back and look at the standard model, the quarks and all the different particles and neutrinos, and isn't it wild how this like little system came came to being? Creates is underpins everything we see. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's why we'd like to understand it better. We want to know: is it part of some bigger sector? Um, why are these particles? Why do they have the masses they do? Yeah. Um, why is the Higgs boson so light compared to the mass it could have had, which we might have even expected based on the principles of special relativity and quantum mechanics? So that's a really big question. Why are they what they are? And, and they originate, there's like some mechanism that created the whole thing? That's one of the things we're trying to study. Why is it what it is? I mean, even just like the mechanism that creates stuff, like the way a human being is created from a single cell. It's like embryogenesis, like the, the whole thing, like you build up this thing, all of it, th this whole thing comes to be from just like a Well, tiny don't forget, little... it is interacting with the environment. Sure. <laughs> okay, right, right, right. It's, it's not, it's not, right. It's important. Well, that's a really good question is how much of it is the environment? Is it just the environment acting on a set of constraints and... Uh, like how much of it is just the information in the DNA or the information? How much is it in the initial conditions of the universe or uh, versus the, the uh, some other thing acting on it? These are big questions. 
these are big questions in pretty much every field. Um, you know, we for the universe, we do consider it, you know, it's everything there is by definition. Mm -hmm. But people now think about it, is it one of many universes? Um, and of course, it's a misnomer, but could there be other places where there are self-contained gravitational systems that we don't even interact with? So, but those are really important questions. And the only way we're going to answer them is, you know, we go back as far as we can. We try to think theoretically, and we try to think about observational consequences. That's all we can do.